enjoy music. And I'm telling him all these things. And he says, that sounds like you're bipolar depression. And I said, you know, I don't really feel like I'm depressed. I, I, I'm still like trying to do things. You know, I've never really been depressed in my life and I've known people who've been depressed, but I'm, I literally can't feel anything. And he said, no, no, it just sounds like your depression. And I said, I think it's the medication. And he said, no, I don't think it's the medication. And I said, okay, well, what, what's going to happen? Like, what am I supposed to do? And I said, you know, how long am I even supposed to take this medication? He said, you know, like potentially years, you know, the rest of your life, essentially. And at this point, I never, I was never given a proper diagnosis. Like on all of my paperwork, there was no diagnosis. I was never given a diagnosis. And I also found out that Aristata is not even FDA approved for bipolar. It's for schizophrenia. And I was never even mm -hmm. diagnosed with schizophrenia. And I didn't realize all this till later. So he recommends Lexapro. He said, you know, this happens. It's common. You should just take an antidepressant. And I was extremely hesitant. And I was like, is that going to help? You know, like, this is okay. Like, and I agreed to take the Lexapro. And then he said, you know, soon you're going to have to get another injection. Like your time is coming to get another injection. And at this point I was like, there's no way I'm doing that again. And I, I told him that I expressed my concerns to him. And he said, you can make a decision of what you want to do with pills or the injection, but you still, I need you to, you should consider, you should continue to stay on these, on this antipsychotic. And at this point I was like, you know, do I, is it necessary to be on these medications right now? Like, but at least besides the antidepressant. And he was like, yes, you know, we don't want you to go into psychosis again or have mania again. We want to avoid the hospital at all costs. Because my concern was going back to the hospital. And I, I told him I want to take the pills. And I asked him, I said, can we lower it? 15 milligrams seems like a lot. And he said, no. So I ended up taking 15 milligrams of Abilify and then 10 milligrams of Lexapro for two months after the injection. Or yeah, it was like a month and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. in, gen in, in total, I was on medication for like three and a half months. Walk us forward. What happened now that you transitioned to oral meds? I started experiencing akathisia. At the time, I didn't even know what that was. I just started pacing in my house for 10, eight hours a day. I just remember being in my house. It was like a beautiful July. And I'm like looking around in my neighborhood thinking like, what is going, what is wrong with me? And I'm just pacing and watching the clock on my oven thinking like what I'm, I've gone, I've gone mad. Like there's something like, and I had this and just internal restlessness. Like I wanted to crawl out of my skin and it was like anxiety, but it's not anxiety. It's like you're, I don't even know how to, it's undescribable. I can't even describe it. And my husband, mm -hmm. you know, was concerned and he didn't know what was going on. And that lasted for about two months, like the whole duration of when I was on these pills. And I could not, I could mm -hmm. barely sleep. I was, I was essentially losing my mind. And, um, I had another appointment with this doctor, psychiatrist, and he I'm trying to think. There was a point where I was messaging him, telling him my concerns. And then he, his assistant emailed me back the day before our appointment and said that he needed to cancel the appointment. And at this point, I wanted to get off the medication like ASAP. So he canceled our appointment and he ended up being out of town for two months. And I was desperate to get off the medication. So I had to find a new psychiatrist now at this point. Mm -hmm. So I had to start that process of finding a new doctor, telling him my story. And then he helped me taper off the medication. And at this point, I didn't realize it was a rapid taper, but he tapered me off within like a two, three week period. It's not the, not the worst thing for the Lexapro. Um, after about two months, it's still pretty quick though. Um, so what, 
what happened off what what happened after that so you okay you've got akathisia you're pacing you go through this rapid taper where did you land after that if you give me just 89 seconds, I'm going to show you this $1 million skill that they were scared to teach you in school and how you can use it to get out of the nine to five rat race and use it to build financial freedom. I was always working long hours because I wanted to get ahead and provide the good life for my family. But no matter how many hours I put in, nothing changed. I was still working a boring dead end job, trading my time for money. And I knew I didn't want to be doing this for the rest of my life. But for some reason, I was just complacent, settling for something that I knew was less than my potential. And then one day working well past 5 p.m. on my hour long drive home from work, it hit me. I can't keep trading all of my time for money. So I started doing the math in my head and it was clear that I would never make the type of money that I wanted. Working an hourly job, the only way to make more money was to work more hours. And that was the opposite of what I wanted. I thought maybe I can go back to college, but no, going back to college was going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and take years of my life. Then I thought, well, maybe I can start a business. And then I learned nine out of 10 businesses fail. And even the ones that make it takes two to three years to become profitable. So there I was stuck showing up every day at a boring job, just trading my time for money for a measly pay. Until one day, I came across a different kind of opportunity. I learned that there was this one skill that would give you total control of your pay. Instead of trading a fixed... So once I got off the medication, that was last August. And mm -hmm. I... Eventually, the acathesia went away. And I sleep three to five hours a night now instead of like two but besides that, all of my symptoms have stayed the same. Can you take a moment just to to list uh, your symptoms just in detail? Maybe start with some of the cognitive stuff and then the emotional symptoms and then anything physical, maybe in that order. Just describe what, what, it, what it's like for you now. Yes. So my memory is horrible. I used to work in restaurant management and I had an excellent memory. My job literally required me to remember many things at once. And I can barely remember short-term and long-term situations. Like somebody told me something and like within 15, 20 minutes, like I'll most likely forget. And long-term memory, if somebody brings up a story or something that happened in my life, I can't visualize it and I can't remember like, I have to really think about it and I can't really remember like in detail, like what happened. Like I really don't. And that's happened multiple times with my family, like bringing up memories or something. I don't remember it. And word finding, I have a really hard time finding words in my head. If somebody's trying to tell me a story or communicate something to me. I have a really hard time like continuing the conversation. Like I used to be very witty and chatty and I was known to speak a lot. And now I'm essentially a mute. All my friends and family members have said that, like, wow, you're so quiet. Like, I've never seen you like this. So it's extremely um, isolating. and I feel, like, disconnected. And I don't – it's really hard for me to contribute to conversations now because of the word-finding and memory issues. I essentially feel like my mind is empty compared to what it used to be. Mm -hmm. And um, – just retaining information, like reading, like it's really difficult for me. The, when I was on the Abilify, I could barely read. Like even to try to research like what was going on was extremely difficult because I, I couldn't like comprehend and like register and like maneuver through like what I was reading. Like it was very like foggy and disorganized and I couldn't really remember like register what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, and the emotional blunting for the first four months, I could not cry. Like I could not, no matter what, I could not cry. And mm -hmm. I also barely had any facial expressions when I was medicated. Like even my family was saying like, you look like you had Botox, essentially you don't even express yourself at all. Like you look like you're just, you know, like a mannequin essentially. So the emotional blunting affected me so poorly, even when I, especially when I was on the medication that I was not even expressing myself like in any way. And I was basically saying like, yes or no answers. And I wouldn't really communicate. And the anhedonia, like the inability to feel any pleasure has just been completely soul destroying, not experiencing any emotions and any pleasure from anything I do, no matter what I'll, I've tried everything you can think of 
prior to this, I've gone to talk therapy for years and I've developed pretty healthy coping skills of what I've learned that used to make me feel happy or cheer me up or, you know, everything textbook of what they say to do when you're depressed or nothing works. Like no matter all the talk therapy I've done, all the activities, exercise, things I used to enjoy, nothing makes me feel good or better, nothing. So for me right now, the emotional blunting and anhedonia is the worst. And I would say second is the cognitive issues. And then I have sexual dysfunction as well. Um, the sensory is off completely. Like it does not feel the same at all whatsoever, what it used to feel like before. Um, and it's not like enjoyable and I don't feel like connected to my partner like I used to at all. It's extremely uh, dehumanizing experience. And mm -hmm. the insomnia is insane. It's gotten better, but to not sleep for a year and basically sleeping two, three hours now to five hours is just, you know, it, it's one of a form of human torture to like sleep deprive somebody. And um, just having zero motivation, not having a reward system and not enjoying anything is just, it's, you're dragging, you know, 50,000 pounds on your back and you're trying to do basic tasks, essentially. Talk to us about how your life has changed since all of this happened. Um, what, what is it like in your, start with your relationship. What impact has this had on your marriage? It's had a horrible impact. Yeah. It's not, it's not okay right now. And, um, it's my entire family as well. I haven't seen so many close friends and like relatives. I've missed weddings. Um, I've, I've attempted to attend a few parties and events throughout the year and it's, it's soul destroying. Like being in a room surrounded by people you love and care about that you've known for years and celebrating holidays and just to be the only person in the room that can't feel connection or anything and not laugh or enjoy what's going on. It's just, I, I truly feel like my soul has been ripped out of my body. Like I didn't think it was humanly possible to feel this way. And I didn't think e this kind of evil even existed in the world. I essentially feel like I had a chemical lobotomy. I know you mentioned you had to stop working. Did you return to work or are you, are you okay? Yeah. What does a day look like for you now? It's, um, it's horrible. Um, I used to be extremely active and I was known as a busy body and I never, I literally never sat down. I was always doing something, being active. And now I basically spend most of my time either in bed, on the couch, on my phone, trying to distract myself any way possible. I try to read sometimes but it's very difficult for me to be engaged into something longer than like a few minutes because I just lose interest or doesn't keep my attention. Um, I can't enjoy TV. I can't enjoy music. I'll still try to listen to it or watch things, but it's very, I'm just not interested or engaged at all. And it's even triggering at moments because I can't, I don't know what, I can't relate to it at all anymore. And I don't feel connected to it. Like watching like a romantic comedy or something and you see this life in front of you, healthy, normal humans, it just makes you feel like so, it's like just being stabbed in the heart that you can't experience mm -hmm. that. I um, try to go for a walk sometimes. So that's even extremely difficult because I also have fatigue. I think partially just because I don't sleep anymore, um, but mm -hmm. I don't have any energy anymore like I used to. And everything I do is just going through the motions. I spend most of my time basically sitting around, just trying to pass the day. And it's extremely difficult. How has your husband reacted to what has happened to you, you know, from, from his perspective? What, what has that been like for him, you know, as you've seen that evolve? He's um, very concerned 
and worried. Um, it has like completely like just traumatized him and like destroyed him. He's also a shell of himself because of what has happened to me. And we, we just got married as well. Like five months into our marriage, this happened to me. So it has been horrible, horrible, like on the two of us. And I have spent a lot of my time away from him, not even in my home because of um, the suicidal ideation that I've been experiencing. And he works and it's been extremely stressful for him to have that on his shoulders, knowing like he can't watch me 24 seven. So I've been staying a lot with like family members who have more time or home more to help like essentially watch me because at this point I don't want to go to a hospital right now, but I have spent like a lot of my time throughout the year with other like various family members, just like essentially so they can watch me. What has this been like for your parents um, to, I mean, have they been able to understand the diagnosis and what's happened to you? Because I know uh, PSSD, I mean, I'm, it's not a serotonin drug, but that's exactly what it sounds like you have from yeah. from what you're describing. Have have they been able to understand and accept the diagnosis? What, what was it like for um, parents or whoever your closest family member is? They all are very worried and concerned and they believe me, which is, you know, a relief to know, like, they don't think I'm just like making up something and they know, they know who I was before and they know like who I am and they know that this is not, you know, me anymore. They, um, are trying their best to like support me in any way they can, but you know, they're, they're confused. They don't really understand fully like to the length of like what I'm experiencing, you know, 